Good morning. I trust you guys are well. Thank you for joining us in another episode again this week. Um, last week Frick discussed in more detail his Yacht Master Offshore online course. And this week I am going to talk about insurance. What does yet insurance mean? It covers the cost of accidental loss or damage to your boat on an all-risk basis and it includes third-party liability and in return you pay a premium. All the premiums, we call it, it, it gets pooled, in other words it all gets paid into one pool and out of that pool they pay the claims, they pay salaries, overheads, my commission, so everything gets paid out of that pool. The whole idea of insurance, it's supposed to put you back in the position you were exactly at the time of the loss. So not inferior or superior to where you were, but more or less exactly in the same position you were at the time of the loss. Okay, now the big question seen is um, for how much? How much do you insure your boat for? How do you, how do you go about that one? Um, there's two options available. Okay, the first one is the agreed fixed value. Here you have to ask yourself, what is my potential loss going to be? Is it what I paid for the boat? Or is it going to be what it's going to cost me to replace it? And do I have a mortgage on the boat? So those are the questions you need to ask yourself at this stage. Um, one thing on the offset I need to say here, yeah, if there is a mortgage on the boat, just always remember in the case of a total loss, the mortgage will get settled and if there's any small change it will come your way. In the early years of a boat, some insurers will accept the fact that you're going to insure at current replacement value. And how to establish the value, a good starting point to calculate the value is to add together um, what you paid for the boat. Did you do any alterations to it? Did you do upgrades, the value of your outboards, the tenders, any other equipment that you might have added? So if you add all that up and then you measure it against market values from a couple of reputable yacht brokers, and then you can more or less adjust your value that you arrived at accordingly. With a fixed agreed value, the insurer agrees right from day dot at what the insured value is going to be. As long as you can demonstrate how you got to these valuations and figures that is reasonable and that you have not deliberately misled them by inflating the values, um, then you shouldn't have any problems. Always, a big tip here is always keep all paperwork relating to any upgrades, additions, whatever you've done to the boat to increase the value, keep that should they insist on seeing that. Today's economic climate, um, people are always looking at ways to reduce expenses. And insurance premiums always comes under the scrutiny. People are always um, thinking maybe if they can cut costs on insurance, it'll help the budget balance at the end of the day. Um, just remember, premiums are almost always directly linked to the value of the boat. And I guess this is where the people start underinsuring them. They think, oh, let's just go for a lower value and um, just to get the premiums down. Okay, what this means is, um, should you choose to insure your boat for below market value, um, say for instance 75% of market value, you will only get compensated for 75% of, of that value. Um, if your claim is a partial loss or damage, this could have a big impact on your cash flow as you will have to meet the shortfall and the cost of your deductible or excess um, in addition. So th that's going to be a tough one. If you really feel the need to, to um, reduce your premium, there are other ways to do it. Um, I can just mention a couple of them. You can choose a higher excess deductible, in other words the first amount that you need to pay in on a claim. Um, you can consider self-insuring stuff like clothing, cell phones, 
small stuff that you carry on you with you, um, cameras, that type of thing. Uh, stay out of hurricane uh, areas during hurricane season. That will reduce your premium as well. And then check if there's any discount if you pay your premium annually instead of monthly. Most companies do offer a discounted premium for annual payments. Second option is the actual cash value option. It provides less coverage but obviously at a less premium. This normally covers you for the current market value of your, of your boat, less depreciation as well. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's quite a huge difference in coverage. So what, what influences the premium? How can you, what has an impact on how insurers calculate your, your premium? Size and value. Size always, it's kind of self-explanatory. The bigger the boat, the more expensive, the higher the exposure risk to the company, so obviously the higher the premium. As the premiums get calculated on value. Flight plan and navigation also has a high as an impact on your premium. Um, some areas are considered high risk areas like Cape Horn, definitely your premium will be increased there. Um, okay and interestingly enough you as an owner does not have to be a competent skipper or have a qualified skipper's license as long as you have a qualified skipper on board your cover will not be impacted. Okay what does the policy cover? It covers physical damage to your hull, to your cells, machinery, furnishings, onboard equipment, personal belongings, a trailer if there's a trailer involved. So everything to do with a boat is covered under this policy. And it is while it's afloat, while it's on shore, while it's been lifted or launched in transit, just check with your company the transit cover if, um, if that does include the tra transit cover. Some exclude that and can include it at additional premium. Okay, what is it insured against? I'm just going to mention a couple of the major ones that's normally in question. It's accidental damage. That's basically what it says. It's any sudden, unforeseen impact damage. In layman's terms, it usually means an unintentional, once-off incident that harms your property or its contents. Second one is fire. It's, it's covered against fire. Just check with your policy as well. Some demand fire extinguishers at certain areas um, on your boat. So just check with that. Theft. Um, there's one or two things that I can mention under theft. Most insurers will, if the whole vessel isn't stolen, any other theft has to be accompanied by violent and forcible means. In other words, they need to see there was violence means of entering in or exiting out of your vessel. Okay, theft of a dinghy tender is normally excluded unless it has an identifiable mark on it or a name or a number, anything that you can identify it with. Now, theft of gear and equipment, again, forcible and violent entry and means. The theft of the outboard motor is only covered if you have a serial number for, the, for it and if it has been secured by an outboard motor lock. Um, yeah, Anti-theft devices can also work like a kill switch key or a padlock etc. The dinghy is also covered as long as it was left by a recognized mooring or anchorage. Or Alternatively, if it was secured to the boat. Okay, a couple of tips here. Um, as far as theft is concerned, install an alarm. You can install tracking devices. Keep an inventory of all your valuables. It just makes life so much easier when it comes to claiming. Um, any documentation where you've upped the value, increased the value, added equipment, whatever, keep that as well. Uh, use a lockable fuel cap install secure storage, personal belongings, sufficient equipment should be out of sight. Um, if you leave it lying in the open, it will definitely not be covered. It's like, hello, here I am, come steal me. Malicious damage always also included, um, which includes vandalism. Okay, sinking and straining. I just need to stop your sinking. In the boat insurance industry, catastrophic losses that in, 
that would be like fire explosion, sinking, demasting, are considered a consequence. For example, when your boat sinks um, due to rusted through hole fittings breaking off, um, sinking is a consequence of the broken through hole. Make sure your policy includes consequential damage. If consequential damage is not covered under your policy, almost every sinking and fire will be excluded because the origin was because of wear and tear. Now wear and tear is never covered, but because of the wear and tear, the boat sunk. That is consequential. Then it, that would be covered. The actual part that is worn out will not be covered, but the actual the, the sinking will be covered. Collision obviously is covered under this policy. That would be collision, colliding into another boat, into a jetty, a buoy, fish farm, whatever, that's always covered. Salvage cost, another point to ponder on. The cost to salvage a vessel after an incident took place. Um, most people say the main reason they buy insurance is for the big things. The most common types of catastrophe insurance claims are sinking and hurricane claims. And in both of these cases, the policy salvage section would cover this. Um, that, that will pay to remove your boat from the bottom of the marina or from somebody's backyard. Check that your policy has it in full cover, not just the percentage of the hull. Otherwise you could be paid out for your, your sunken boat and then you will still have to fork out the money for the salvage or, or, or most of it because the value was only calculated on a percentage of the whole. So just make sure you have got the cover. The loss, another thing that's covered under this policy is um, loss or damage caused by latent defects. Um, a latent defect is a hidden flaw or a weakness in the design or the build of the boat that is not apparent at any routine in, um, inspection and is not a result of gradual deterioration or a lack of maintenance. So your latent defects are covered. Third party liabilities, in other words, um, any injury or damage caused by you due to your negligence to a third party, and this also includes um, collision liabilities, in other words, you at fault, um, wreck removal and damage caused by pollution, spillage of diesel or whatever. Um, apparently a lot of marinas insist on boats having a third party liability for at least a million US dollars. This not only covers for any damages to other people's boats but also if your boat damages a marina or a pier. Um, can you imagine if you come into to dock and your engine fails? That could be catastrophic so it's very important to Make sure your liability policy is in place. Extra cover, normally included, uh, but then again, check with your current insurer if it is, if it is the case. Use of, um, under the liability, um, is the use of water sport equipment um, associated with the boat. As I mentioned just now, pollution, if there's a sudden impact and you have gas spillage or, or diesel spillage, Remember, wear and tear is always excluded, so it has to be accidental damage. Um, search and rescue, if you um, unintentionally released the EPIRB and there was no emergency, even that is covered under your liability. Any legal cost, if you have to contest the liability claim against you, so all the legal cost there is covered. Um, if you use somebody else's boat and you also cause injury or accident, accidents against the third party, it will be covered on that boat as well. And then obviously your marina liability is also included. Okay, some typical exclusions under your liability would be um, the use of firearms, diving unless you are in the possession of some form of qualification. Um, any discharge of petrol or oil because of your own recklessness, that will not be covered. Um, any disease 
that is transmitted by you or anyone else on your vessel. So no claims for diseases picked up on your boat can be instituted against your policy. General terms and conditions seldom vary from, from policy to policy, so they're all more or less on par. But again, just check with your current either broker or insurer that this is actually the case. Material disclosure and representation, that's one of the conditions it is always required um, that you make complete and true disclosure of all material facts that could influence the way the insurance company calculates your premium. Change of risk. Um, if you added stuff to your boat, obviously the risk or the exposure increased because the value increases. So anything extra that you've done or anything that changes the risk if you um, move from a less secure marina to a more secure marina, inform the company, it could be beneficial to you because your, your risk could be reduced, or your premium could be reduced. Navigational limits, um, there are normally navigational limits on all policies and this is normally 250 nautical miles offshore. Okay. Unplanned departures from these navigational limits when done because of an emergency or for where, weather routing will not invalidate your cover but you have to notify your insurer immediately or as soon as possible. Okay, the use of the vessel is like when you insure your car, what do you use it for? It's insured while it's afloat, while in commission, while being used for private and pleasure purposes, um, even for business entertainment while it's laid up, um, even if it's exhibited at a, at a recognized boat show. Okay, avoidance of loss, uh, another point, you must always act as if you don't have insurance at all. Due care must always be taken. Your duties in the event of a claim, you always have to notify your insurer at your earliest convenience. Um, if there was any theft or crime involved, the authorities have to be notified immediately. Uh, you must take all necessary steps to avoid any further damage. Never ever affect repairs without the written consent of your insurer. You could land up paying the bill yourself. Um, in cases of third party uh, claims, never ever ever admit guilt on behalf of the insurance company. So never ever admit guilt. The okay, proof of ownership, as I probably mentioned twice already before, um, is very important. So any documentation, please keep it in inventory form. Try and get serial numbers down as much as you can. Take pictures, whatever. Keep hard copies on shore, keep on file at, on the boat, or have somebody responsible keep a set for you as well. It just makes life so much easier when it comes to claiming. If you can proof without a doubt ownership, it just, it just makes it so much easier. Approximate cause, another insurance term. It means something that sets off a chain of events that leads to a loss or damage. For example, when you're in a marina and an uninvited rat gets on board and it starts eating through some cables or electrical wire or whatever, or inlet hose for the matter, and it causes the boat to sink. The proximate cause is the rat eating the hose, and normally policies exclude vermin, so um, you won't be covered in that one. So the proximate cause is what started the event, and in this case it's not covered because it's a rat. As specific countries and areas, um, some insurers exclude certain areas so if you plan on navigating around the world just lodge your flight plan with your company to make sure that all the places you intend visiting is in actual fact covered by them so there won't be any surprises afterwards um, general exclusions um, normally excluded under all policies wear and tear is one of the first big no-no's never ever covered and then obviously stuff like osmosis, blistering, fiberglass or surface coat blistering, rust, corrosion, rot, fungi, mold, infestation, 
always not covered barnacles um, faulty design or construction defective workmanship always not covered failing to keep your vessel seaworthy not covered damage to computer software excluded um, transportation is cargo in other words if leopard sends a cat from Cape Town to Fort Lauderdale not covered your contractor should have his own goods in transit cover in place will be covered under that um, okay obvious one as well sales if you blow a sail not covered okay frost and freezing of the vessel is not included unless you can provide evidence that you've taken all necessary preventative measures um, that would include complying to the manufacturer's specifications or acting on behalf on the advice of a qualified marine engineer reckless behavior drugs misuse alcohol misuse not covered optional extras um, that you can add onto your policy as well as damage to mast and rigging whilst racing racing is normally excluded so you have to actually ask to have it included on your policy normally add an extra premium hurricane season cover can be added piracy it's not always included in your policy so check again with your policy if not have it added should you be in the area where it's prone for piracy was an acts of terrorism again you have to add that at an additional premium and then personal accident and medical expenses can also be added to your policies just a little bit on hurricanes named hurricanes and cyclones which is ex excluded normally under your policy but as i said can be included there's several stages that a storm goes through before it becomes a hurricane it normally starts with a tropical the, what they call a depression where the wind is below 34 four knots and then um, the second stage would be a tropical storm and that would be winds between 34 and 63 knots and then it becomes a hurricane and a hurricane has five categories so the first category normally starts at 63 knots and the category five which is the ultimate reaches a speed of 135 knots per hour. Okay, hurricanes, why are they named? It's just for easy reference. They started with women names and then later on men names were introduced. For the third year in a row, the Atlantic hurricane season began before its official start on June 1st. I'm meteorologist Jason Myers and tropical storm Arlene formed in April. Only the second named storm to do so in that month. As for the rest of the season, here's what we'll be calling all the tropical storms and hurricanes in 2017. Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harvey, Irma. It's raining so hard. Look like it's gonna rain all night. Jose, Katia, Lee, Maria, Nate, Ophelia, Philippe, Rena, Sean, Tammy, Vince, Whitney. Because the list of hurricane names repeats itself every six years, this is the same list we used in 2011 with one exception. Irma replaced Irene. That's because Irene was retired after the Category 3 storm struck the United States and the Caribbean, killing 49 people and costing a whopping $16.6 .6 billion, the seventh costliest hurricane in U.S. history. And if early predictions are any indication, we're only going to make it about halfway through this list or just past the newly named Irma. Okay, again, check with your insurer or your broker. Some insurers agree that if you take adequate steps to prepare your boat in readiness for hurricanes, um, they can provide named storm, windstorm yacht insurance cover throughout the Caribbean. So just check with your insurer. Some have specifications of how to tie down the boat and where to tie down. Can you expect to pay extra premium or higher premium for hurricanes? Definitely, yes, there will definitely be extra premiums involved, but that depends on your 
um, your preparedness or your preventative measures that you've taken, um, the better prepared the boat is, the more competitive you can expect your insurance premium to be. Okay, most, cab most underwriters require a completed questionnaire for the hurricane cover. Um, so they can better understand what measures you've taken to prevent damage or um, safeguard your boat and do you have layup plans or anything that can help them to calculate the appropriate premium to the risk. No questionnaire, no cover. That's unfortunately the policy of, of, of all these insurers. Um, what happens if you change your plans? Just notify your insurance company immediately. Notify them if there's anything that deviates from your plan so that they can either request you to complete a, a second questionnaire or they can just make a note on the policy. Um, unstepping of most. Uh, do I have to unstep my mask? Again, it depends on your company, it depends on your area where you're in, uh, but unstepping the mast will definitely improve your ability to negotiate a better premium as well. Cradles, the use of cradles. Cradles um, is possibly the best option to protect your boat um, and this will be reflected in your premium and your excess as well. Some insurers don't even charge any hurricane premium. Uh, or increase any excesses if you are in a cradle and if you've unstepped your moss, so it is just a plus plus. Warranties of seaworthiness. Mm. General, general maritime law implies two different warranties of seaworthiness that insurers can invoke to deny coverage. Okay, most of us are familiar with your warranties that cover or, or cover the repair or replacement of a TV or a car or whatever. Um, okay, these type of warranties are normally expressed in writing and needs to be followed to the T. If you don't adhere to it, your cover is null and void. Um, okay, but it's a complete different ball game when it comes to boating. Okay, there's two. Okay, under the implied warranty of seaworthiness, if you yacht is deemed unseaworthy, there won't be any cover whatsoever. And it's irrelevant whether you, as the insured, were aware of the, of the unseaworthy condition. The negative implied warranty of seaworthy is the ongoing promise by you to the insurance company that um, you will not knowingly take or send your yacht out to sea in an unworthy an unseaworthy condition. Say for instance um, you were well aware that the engine room fire su uh, suppression system is faulty and you do send the yacht out and there's a fire on board and because of this faulty system it couldn't have been stopped, uh, your claim will be denied. Okay, seaworthy, seaworthiness or unseaworthiness. Um, courts of law have found vessels to be unseaworthy for a range of deficiencies, but I'm just going to mention a few. Lack of bilge pumps, um, defective gear, broken hand tools, you can't perform maintenance work or whatever, um, insufficient manpower, unfit crew members, or just some of the things that can contribute to being unseaworthy. Okay, some tips from an insurance broker. Um, okay, often you hear people complaining about their service when it comes to claiming. And um, mostly it is issues with communication, lack of communication, and not being able to prove ownership. I strongly suggest or recommend always provide as much detail as what you possibly can when you claim. Get quotes yourself, that will just speed up the whole process um, and it will assist the, the, the claims department in doing their job. That way you can also ensure that you are actually sourcing quotes for something similar or exactly what you had. So do you not, don't feel done in by an inferior product. Another thing, consider using a broker. Hell, the service is for free. You don't pay extra for it. Um, they will ensure that your cover is in accordance with your requirements. We know all the products out there, so we can tailor make a product that's going to suit you. 
and we can assist with all claims handlings. Read your policy, make sure, especially at renewal, that you are still, that all the stipulations are still correct, that your flight plans are still correct. Um, check if anything has changed in the year in your circumstances that you've forgotten to tell your insurer. So just check and go through your policy. Um, as mentioned again before, write up an inventory, keep track of all your equipment, make sure to keep photos or any proof of anything that you, that you have acquired extra. Remember to pay your premium. Always been up and down on a boat, you don't always get your post, so just check or make a note or diarise your renewal date so that you can check that you pay your premium in advance. Um, we easily forget about that. Insurance is normally the last thing on any person's mind until the day when you need it. So people tend to forget to pay premiums. Keep a copy, of, a hard copy of your insurance policy in a safe at home um, with a trusted person. A broker should have a copy for you as well. Um, keep a copy of your insurance certificate on board, uh, especially when you're entering ports and they need evidence or, or proof of, of liability insurance, then you've got a copy on board. That way you also have the contact details of your broker or your claims department, whoever you're going to be needing in transit. Oh, and when you travel to weird foreign countries as well, ask your insurance company if they can give you a translation. Um, keep a translator copy on board as well. That will just help explain a lot of uncertainties if there's a, a language barrier. So, for those of you who already are insured, consider this a reminder to dig out your old policy and ensure that it still meet, meets your needs and that you are complying with their requirements. Um, stupid things. Have you got a fire extinguisher on board? Um, has your dinghy got a name? Is it locked correctly? Um, it would be terrible to miss getting paid out because of such a simple thing, don't you think? That's me for this week. Please, any comments, leave it below. Any questions, um, I'll be leaving my email address below. So inbox me anytime with any questions, any assistance, and I'll gladly help you.